Hi, I'm Keith Whitelock, and welcome to Watercolor Workshop. Not long ago at a show, I had one painting in particular that seemed to get a lot of interest. It was a simple workboat with a foggy background and some trees that you could barely make out just behind that boat. It had a lot of atmosphere, but not a great deal of detail. It was actually a pretty simple composition. I've scaled that down today, and I'm going to show you how we'll treat that. This is the sketch I've prepared for our foggy worker. And we want the white work boat saved in here. And we want a nice foggy area in the entire painting. And what's going to be rather interesting is this little tree line. And we won't paint that in later when it's dry. We'll paint that in while the fog is nice and wet because we want this to creep and look a little misty and indefinite. We really don't want to paint every little branch in here and I'll show you how that'll work. Our detailed area will simply be the boat and the, the waterman and we're going to indicate some reflections in here. Now I've transferred this sketch, just traced the very faintest outlines onto the 300 pound watercolor paper here. This is 300 pound cold pressed and I have already taken some masking fluid and I've painted in the work boat with that and let that dry down because we want that to be just plain white paper and everything else is going to be the nice foggy shady color. Now to get the nice wet into wet effect that I want in the fog, the first step will simply be to take plain clear water and cover the surface of the paper with that and let it soak in for a minute. Now while that water soaks into the paper, I'm going to take a little phthalo blue and a little burnt umber and I'm going to mix those together and come up with a nice gray color. It may be a little bluish gray if we want to add a little more brown take some of the blue away, we can. Now remember, when this does dry, the uh, whole affair is going to be somewhat lighter than what I put it in. So we might want it just a hair darker. Now to get the fog effect we want, we just simply want to darken this paper with this wash so we can get that boat to pop out. If it looks like it's a little too light, We'll simply come up with a, a little darker wash and add that in. We'll brush that out in a couple of different directions because I really don't want it to look streaky. I'd like to get this wash as even as possible. One method of getting a wash like this to come out even and avoid streaks is to simply raise the paper up on edge and let gravity pull at the wash a bit. That really does a good job of evening out. Now one thing it will do in a case like this is it will also pull the wash right up against that masking fluid. So I'll just turn it upside down and repeat. And where the water is puddled on the table, I want to keep the paper towel handy and get that extra water mopped up rather quickly. And I think that'll dry down just about like I want it. Now while it's drying, I will squeeze some water out of my brush and just ever so carefully pull those little droplets off of the basking fluid. When they dry, they might cause a little smearing. We simply don't need them there, so we'll pull them off. And while this wash is drying down. I'll very carefully keep my eye on just how shiny this whole business is. This gloss of the paper is one indicator about exactly how wet it is. And what I'm going to want to do is so that I don't get any backwash around the edges, I'll mop up that water and I'll prepare a slightly darker version of this wash so that I can put this in for the tree line that I mentioned earlier. We'll refer back to the sketch and see where that tree line is. And it doesn't have to be very detailed, but when this paper gets at just the right stage, that's when we'll paint it in. I'm going to mix a little phthalo blue, a little brown together. The 
same colors I used for my fog mixture. And I'm going to use my grass comb brush because I want the slightly irregular edge for my tree line. And just like we paint clouds, I'm going to just stipple in the effect for the tops of some of these trees and bushes. Just going to take the tip of the brush and lay them in and let them creep along. And somewhere in the area where I'm interested in my I guess this would just simply be the marsh line here. I'm going to let that creep. And maybe just a few indicators of tree trunks. Just let that creep out into almost nothingness. This area is starting to dry and because it is, this creeping is going to be much less broad. It's going to be very, very close now about to how far these little back runs go. I'm going to dab in just a tiny bit of darker color here. I'm going to see just how absorbent the paper is now and run just a few little reflection lines. Into that water area. And we'll come back and put some more deliberate ones in later. Now I have forced this paper dry with the hair dryer, being careful not to overheat this area where this masking fluid is. So the next step before we can get back to some painting is to take our finger and simply rub this material away. Now you can see that with the masking fluid removed, we've exposed the nice bright white paper again. Now if there's a drawback to the masking fluid, it's that it kind of roughs up the surface a little bit when we rub it off. So I'm going to take some clean water and ever so carefully I'm just going to paint over the white paper and that'll help lay down the fibers. It'll help bring up a little of the sizing that's still in the paper. And once this dries, we have to wait for a little drying time again, but this will really help recondition this paper so that it isn't rough anymore, or at least it's not going to be as rough as it was had we not painted down these little loose fibers. Now that the paper has dried down good and we've got it nice and flat, we need to do something with this nice bright white boat. So the first thing we want to do is use some of the same gray, perhaps blew it down just a little bit, that we used for the fog. But we're going to apply that to what we want to be the shadow side of the boat. Now in the fog, the light 
won't be strong enough in real life to give you a real strong set of shadows. So we might exaggerate those just a little bit. I'm using a number three round. I do want to make these shadow areas jump out at us a little bit. That'll keep this boat from looking rather flat and one-dimensional. I'll use just a little clear water added to that wash to spread that out. We want to darken these windows, sort of mark off the interior part of the boat. And we'll make this line a little darker. That'll help that pop. For our waterman figure, we want a little bit of a warm kind of a, a flesh tone just to pick up on his, on his face and his hands. We know we want his pants to be sort of a dark color. So we'll jump in just underneath of his coat. bring that down to the edge of the ship. We can also establish a little bit of a three-dimensional effect to these upright standards by putting a shady side on those. One thing we don't want in these little areas is wet into wet creeping so I have to be careful and put these little areas in separately try not to let them touch and wait for these little individual places to dry down if I were to paint the man's jacket in just now it would probably creep into the pants if I do want any wet into wet I want it on the shadow side so we'll put some of that in now Now for the transparent part of the window, we're going to take a little of that brownish fog color and pop that in. And remember, if we think that's too dark, for example, if I'm not happy with that, I can take a paper towel, come in here and just touch it, lift a little of that away. And that shapes up the windows. Once again, a little touch of paper towel. We're good to go. Now just under this gunnel of the boat, we want a little bit of a, a dark shadow to separate that. So we'll come back and give that a second touch. Again, using a number three round. This brush points pretty good, so we can use it for both some wider areas and these little details. We'll put a little shadow here just under this curve of the boat. And one of the next things we want to do is come in and paint the water line. But before then, I think I'm going to take a little of this little brown paint and just indicate some places where some dirt, mud might smudge along the top of the gunnel. We'll streak a little bit of that down onto the side of the boat, spread that. Now using the same brush I'm going to take a little burnt sienna and I'm going to add a little bit of burnt umber to it. Just a touch of this bright red color. This we'll use for our bottom paint.
Now we'll come back in a little bit and add some, some more rust, a little bit more working character to the boat. Now I'm going to take just a little phthalo blue and I'm going to add a little burnt umber to that, come up with some more of this foggy wash, but this will be a lot darker than what we used before. I'm now using about a half inch flat brush and what I'm going to do now is jump in and start indicating some reflections from the boat into the water. We don't need a real exact mirror image. But we will mimic little places like where the cabin is. We'll come back and add some more for the waterman. And just a little along the back to suggest that the boat's moving forward in the water. And again, even though we don't have a real strong light source, a little bit forward of the boat will indicate a shadow. It still helps suggest movement. Now as I come forward, I'm adding more water to these washes. And basically I just want to suggest some movement, some ripples here. The water doesn't need to be very busy. We want the water to appear fairly calm and just picking up a few light hints of movement. And of course as the brush runs out of paint, these strokes get lighter and lighter and lighter. And that conveys just about what I'm looking for. Now for our little waterman figure, I've mixed up some yellow ochre. And we're just going to indicate his jacket, color that in and his arms. And I suppose the fellow could use a little cap, so we'll indicate that. And while that's still wet, I will jump in now with this darker burnt umber and indicate the shadow side. And I'll do the same thing for this little stack of baskets. Now our little waterman is holding a set of shaft tongs. You might just barely be able to see the pencil line for those. And I'm using a number two round. We'll just freehand the shaft tongs. And he has a spare set lying in the boat, so we'll just go ahead and indicate those handles as well. We'll put some darker brown, help make this pop. And I'll just barely draw out the little rake-like parts of metal that are on the forward part of these tongs. Actually, I can't imagine a much more difficult or demanding job than to go out into the bay or the river in the dead cold of winter and stand on the washboard of this boat and bring those oysters up 
one essentially little rake full at a time. That's really some hard, hard work. I'll continue with some of this dark brown right at the very bottom of that water line. I'm going to take a little darker red section and apply that right to the forward part of the gentleman's face. Now, as I mentioned before, we'll put a little yellow ochre, put a few little rust streaks coming down the side of the boat, a little more of that indicated rust here and there. I always like the way these old work boats got some of the little rusty streaks appearing on them. Really adds character. We'll just indicate some little registration numbers and a name on the boat. Perhaps some grab rails on the top of the cabin. We'll play with the reflections just a, a little bit at this point. As I said, we don't want a real mirror set of reflections, but some of these darker areas, like where the little worker is standing, the water will pick up those places, perhaps the insides of the windows, maybe even the tongs. And I'll take just a little of that gray color and we'll indicate where the little uprights are on the boat as well. I think that's just about got the effect I'm after. All I want to do is reinforce a couple of these little shadows. In this center part of the boat I might want to just put a few indications of oh, some a few more pieces of working gear or sorted things like that. A few wrinkles in his coat. I'm going to take a little of this dark gray now and just pop a little radio antenna on the boat. This little radio antenna is just a good little helper for the composition because it adds just a little bit of a accent pointing upwards. And just for a touch of color, we're going to put a little red ribbon hanging kind of loosely here, not enough air moving to really get that flowing. And to add just a tiny bit of movement up here in the trees in light blue first, just to sort of sketch them, I'm going to indicate a couple of little ducks. 
This time I have a fairly sharp pointed round brush. Maybe we'll just put three. There's something about using an odd number of little details like this rather than an even number. Somehow it prevents counting. We'll just put a touch of brown on them. And using the same brush, we'll just use a little phthalo and burnt umber to make a signature. And I think this has just about the effect we're after. I think this is a good place to stop because this is a simple subject. I really don't want to overwork this. This is a case where less is more. I hope you enjoyed the demo today and please join me again here on Watercolor Workshop on Pack 14.